Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Python and today I've got 10 quick hints, tips and tricks you guys can use in your Terraria worlds. Let's get into it. Number one, buff your accessories depending on what they buff. Add warding to accessories that defend you or already have defense on them and add menacing to accessories that boost your damage. This way you can maximize the strengths of your accessories. For example, the Ankh Shield provides 4 defense already. You can buff that up to 8 with warding and it's a great way to take even less damage. Buffing up any one of the emblem accessories with menacing gives a whopping 19% increased class damage. Number 2. Building in the space layer in hard mode? Bring walls. Wyverns are very annoying to deal with, more so in master mode with their insane head damage. So if you're going to build in the space layer in Terraria hard mode, bring lots of background walls and spread them all over the place. This will be enough to entirely stop Wyverns from spawning in and ruining your day. If you've already got a valid NPC house with one NPC in it in the space layer, this will also stop Wyverns from spawning. Before heading on, let me remind you guys that if you enjoy this video or want to see more of this style, of video in future, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my future Terraria content. Number 3. Don't want the evil to spread in random places? Fish for your hard mode ores. You may be tempted to break demon or crimson altars to spread hard mode ores across your world, but there's a deadly price you must pay the random spreading of a few evil blocks throughout your world. These random blocks will constantly spread and eventually you'll have multiple evil underground biomes on top of the already existing ones that were generated when hard mode came into effect. If you're willing to spend a bit more time fishing for crates and not breaking demon or crimson altars to give you your hard mode ores and bars, you'd be helping your future self if you ever want to take on the huge project of trying to 100% purify your world. Number 4. Obsidian Armor is one of the greatest sets of armor you can make as a summoner. Upon defeating the Brain of Cthulhu or Eater of Worlds in your world, you can quickly gather resources for the Obsidian Armor. The reason you want Obsidian Armor is because you get massive buffs to your whips, including a whopping 50% extra range and 35% extra speed to your whips, making them reach further and hit enemies and bosses faster. You do only get one extra minion slot with the Obsidian Armor, but you can add two minion slots to that with the summoning potion and pygmy necklace accessory. Four minions plus hugely buffed whips plus the feral claws to make the whips fully auto is a truly incredible combination and one that I heavily encourage you to try. Number 5. Want to make potions on the move? Make a mobile potion crafting safe. You can buy the safe from the merchant after Skeletron has been defeated and at that point also you can go find yourselves an alchemy table in the dungeon. As well as having your potion crafting area at any bases you may have, why not split your potion ingredients and put them in a safe along with an alchemy table so you can also make potions on the move. That way you don't have to travel all over the place to make potions. Pretty simple simple tip, but one I swear by on all of my playthroughs. Real quick before continuing, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Apex Gaming PCs and Sneak Energy Drinks. Sneak offers a wide range of sugar-free energy drinks, my personal favourite being Raspberry Lemonade, and offers starter bundles for you to try. I also have a range of gaming PCs over at Apex, all of which are fully customisable with different parts, and they also offer financing options on all of their PCs. Be sure to use code PYTHON when ordering any Sneak Energy drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs if you want to support me. Thank you. Number 6. The eye bone is the only pet you'll ever need. If you've been lucky enough to acquire the eye bone from the Deer Clops boss, you'll find it tough wanting to replace this pet in future because of what it can do. It essentially acts as an upgraded money trough. It's always following you around, you can easily quick stack your money away in it since it's always close by, and you can access your piggy bank content by right clicking on the eye bone pet. By having the eye bone, you can save yourself an ever important inventory slot by not having your piggy bank or money chop in there because you simply don't need either. 
Number seven, know when in the day to fish for maximum effectiveness. The first 90 minutes or 90 real time seconds of each Terraria day running from 4.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. gives you a 30% boost to your fishing power, a stat which helps determine how much of a chance you have of catching better quality loot. The final 90 minutes of the Terraria day running from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., which is when night starts, also gives you a 30% boost to your fishing power. If you have high-end fishing accessories and fishing armor equipped, the various fishing-related potions consumed, and you fish at these times, you can get a serious amount of fishing power, meaning a high chance of catching better quality loot. Number 8. How to minimize enemy spawns. Want a little bit of peace and quiet at your build areas? There's a few steps you can take to reduce enemy spawn rates, and the good news is all of these things you can do in pre-hard mode, so you don't have to grind for them in hard mode and face being hounded by the higher level enemies. Buy the lawnmower from the golfer and mow all the grass in the areas you want to reduce enemy spawns. Craft peace candles by killing pinkies for their pink gel, making pink torches with them and combining those with a couple gold or platinum bars at a workbench and place them in the areas you want to reduce enemy spawns. Have NPCs nearby. Having even one NPC near where you're trying to reduce enemy spawns will reduce them drastically. Sunflowers will not only reduce enemy spawn rates, but also grant a movement speed buff. If you fished on Sky Islands for damselfish and have Daybloom going spare, you can create calming potions for an extra reduction to enemy spawn rates. Number 9. Build fishing lakes in every biome in your world. Fishing truly is an amazing part of Terraria. When it comes to gathering resources, valuables such as weapons, accessories and ores, and collecting fish required for certain more valuable buff potions. If there's a natural large lake in certain biomes in your world, great. If not, go to the effort of making a fishing lake yourself. It'll be worth it, and you only have to do it once. For example, hallowed fishing lakes are good for prismite for life force potions. Corruption fishing lakes are good for ebon koi for wrath potions. Crimson fishing lakes are good for hemo piranha and crimson tiger fish for heart reach and rage potions. Jungle fishing lakes are good for double cod for ammo reservation potions. Underground jungle fishing lakes are good for variegated lard fish for summoning potions. Snow fishing lakes are good for frost minnows for warmth potions. Lava fishing lakes are good for flare fin koi and obsidian fish for inferno potions. Underground fishing lakes are good for armored cave fish for endurance potions. Sky fishing lakes are good for damsel fish for calming potions. And finally, desert fishing lakes are good for oysters, which give various pearls, which are used for various tiers of luck potions. And finally, number 10. Want to make a super easy and super quick elevator? You scarab bombs. Scarab bombs were introduced in the 1.4 update and offer your character the ability to create elevators incredibly quickly. Simply stand directly in the middle of where you chucked your scarab bomb, making sure not to move side to side at all, and jump just before the scarab bomb detonates to avoid taking damage and being moved about by the explosion, knocking you slightly off course. Do this enough times and you'll reach the underworld with ease. So there we go, a bunch of hints, tips and tricks you can use in your own Terraria worlds. Thanks so much for watching, if you've enjoyed this video or learned something new, be sure to drop a like and share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you don't want to miss out on my future videos, and yeah, that'll just about wrap it up. Thanks for watching, thank you so much for all your support, and I'll see you folks later. Bye bye!